recording. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Paris, come here. Uh oh. That wasn't meant to happen. Still recording, though. Hello, welcome to the workshop. I'm Trej, and uh, I've just come up with. Um, I've just come up with. Yeah, I've invented a technique. All right, let's start again. Bit of grooming. Uh, hello, welcome to the workshop. I'm Trej, and uh, what colour do we want? More red like that. It's a bit more colour, I think. Okay. Hello, welcome to the workshop. I'm Trej, and uh, this is a very quick video. A uh, quick video for a quick painting technique. Uh, just, just really, just forget. Why can't I talk, Iris? Why can't I talk? Oh, oh my God! Why can't I word? That sounded awful, didn't it, Iris? I'll get it right at some point, Iris. I will. Hi, I'm Trej. Welcome to the workshop. Uh, this is a very quick video. I just wanted to demonstrate a technique for painting uh, an army as quickly as possible uh, to get them to the tabletop uh, very, very quickly, but also very, very cheaply. Um, something that puts a lot of people off, I think, is the different kind of paints that are out there and which ones do you use. So, uh, okay, if you want to get an entire army painted, then uh, just use the cheap paints. If you want to do like you know one miniature that you want to enter into a competition, then you know then you can start experimenting with more expensive paints. Uh, for me, I stick to the cheap paints, and this is a technique to get an army onto the tabletop very very quickly without breaking the bank. Okay, okay, this is the technique. Okay, this is just a short video to demonstrate a very quick and dirty method using these models that I gave to my six-year-old son to paint. But he was a bit rubbish at painting, so I took them back off of him. The technique's simple. Base the models however you like, then undercoat them with your usual primer. I'm going to paint them different colours to show how it works with different colour schemes, so I'm using grey for some, the dark ones, and white for others. Basically, I'll be using cheap craft store acrylics for my base colours, then giving them a wash with watercolours and rubbing them all over with a firm damp brush. This will take off the excess watercolour and also remove the cheap acrylic from the edges of the models. This creates a highlight effect, and when you add another watered down layer of the main colour, it'll mix with the watercolour paint to create a wet blended shading effect. I'm going to paint one model with my own chapter colours, which is purple with black pauldrons, with a silver trim around the pauldrons. Instead of describing every single brushstroke, I thought I'd talk a little bit about their background. My chapter's called the Draconite Lords, and you can use them with your own Space Marine Armouries conscripts, if you'd like to. You see, in the backstory, while still a young successor chapter, the Draconite Lords were involved in a crusade against the corrupting influence of chaos, spewing forth from a rift in space known as the Storm of Pugnacity. This idea may have been influenced with the old Eye of Terror campaign, but I mostly switched the Tyranids back in 5th edition, so the original inspiration's lost now. Uh, anyway, the Draconite Lords managed to push back the vile hordes of chaos into the rift. However, the Vortex sucked them in and closed up behind them, trapping them in a strange nightmare realm. They continued to fight a ceaseless battle on unimaginable hell worlds where time had no meaning. Countless battle brothers fell in this realm. Fearing that the dark powers would defile them, the apothecaries collected their bodies and placed them in storage. Is this being a little bit overdramatic? It feels a bit overdramatic. Yeah. <clears throat> the apothecaries collected their bodies and placed them in st Right, placed them in storage, where was it? Cast through time and space, the chapter's sole remaining battle barge and small flotilla of strike cruisers eventually re-emerged into the physical universe centuries later. With their numbers dwindled, they acted more effectively, bolstering other chapters' numbers and trying to act as a force of their own. You see, that's where you can use them in your own Space Marine Army. You just have a couple of models painted up in this way and you can say that they are the Draconite Lords, um, Space Marines that have come to help your army. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> it's alleged though that many of the dead in storage had already been corrupted or infected in some way and exist now as zombie-like undead mockeries of the mighty warriors they once were. Further rumours suggest the librarians have learned to control the limited intellects of these undead automatons psychically, or that they've been fitted with control devices similar to that of a servo skull, allowing them to continue to fight, suggesting the warriors seen in battle today are actually little more than reanimated corpses that come to the aid of the Astartes. 
The full account of what happened in the tormented realms and any repercussions thereof are closely guarded secrets of the chapter librarian. Meanwhile, rumours persist that corrupted Draconite Lords have been seen fighting alongside the forces of chaos. Here's a gallery. Mm -hmm.